Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Thursday, September 10th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So today we do have an unfortunate update to the Braylon Noble case, as well as an announcement from Ohio Governor Mike DeWine regarding leadership at the Ohio Department of Health. But before we dive too deep into any of that, let me get you all caught up on today's latest coronavirus data. So today, there were 1,121 new cases of coronavirus reported compared to the 21-day average of 1,052. There were 30 coronavirus-related deaths reported as well, with that average coming in at 20. Hospitalizations and ICU admissions were up with 81 and 16 respectively, and those averages are now at 74 and 11. Lucas County dropped out of the level three red category and into the level two orange today for the first time in a long while. So that is encouraging news for us. Nine counties also dropped from orange to yellow and 68 stayed the same, but there were six counties in the red, including Putnam locally. DeWine said Putnam has a high level of cases with 280 per 100,000 people. 95 cases have been in the last two weeks alone. DeWine also noted a sustained increase in cases in Putnam on August 19th, the county had an average of five new cases per day, but on August 29th, just 10 days later, that number jumped to 11. And Putnam County stayed in the number one spot on Thursday out of all 88 Ohio counties for the most cases per 100,000 people. The county was reported to have 280.6 cases per 100,000, like I just told you, which is well above the CDC threshold for high incidence. The only other Northwest Ohio County to reach the top 10 was Henry County, which went from the ninth spot up to eight, with 148.1 cases per 100,000 over the last two weeks. DeWine also announced that Ohio native Dr. Joan Doovey would be the new Ohio Department of Health Director. Doovey is a medical doctor with extensive experience in public health. She has been working for the South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster as the Director of Public Health at their Department of Health and Environmental Control. She's a graduate of North Olmsted High School and The Ohio State University and went on to receive a Master of Public Health from the University of Michigan and her medical doctor degree from Johns Hopkins. Doovey is expected to hopefully begin in her new role on October 1st. But DeWine did express concern for Ohioans who may contract the flu and COVID-19 at the same time, encouraging everyone who can to get their flu shot ASAP. So the CDC advises anyone who is able and six months or older to get vaccinated against the flu, including pregnant women whose vaccinations can protect their babies in the time after birth. DeWine encouraged essential workers to go ahead and get that shot as well. And in an effort to get Ohioans on board, the governor, First Lady Fran DeWine, and Lieutenant Governor John Houston received their vaccinations on camera during today's conference. And if you don't know where to get a shot, we have a link ready for you on our website right now, WTOL.com. And if you're upset about losing out on some Buckeye football this fall, you aren't the only one. Ohio Attorney General David Yost at Ohio could sue the Big Ten over the decision to postpone the upcoming fall football season. Now, the Big Ten is still evaluating options on when exactly a football season would be played. And Yost thinks Ohio State can sue the conference and member schools that voted against playing for tens of millions of dollars if those negotiations stall, because he says the Big Ten violated contracts between the conference and OSU. Leaders with the school say they project a $130 million loss in athletics revenue without fall sports. OSU is one of three schools in the Big Ten to vote against postponing the season, and we will for sure keep you updated on any new developments in this case. And another controversial sports decision was made up to our north in Michigan yesterday. The use of face coverings in organized sports where players cannot practice social distancing is now required by law in the state. Ultimately, the order requires that face coverings be worn at all times by athletes training for, practicing for, or competing in an organized sport in Michigan when the athlete can't maintain six feet of social distance. This means that while swimmers aren't required to wear masks, athletes who play sports like football, soccer, and volleyball are. Our reporters are looking into how that could impact some of our Ohio athletes who often play in competitions across state lines. So we will definitely keep you updated on that. But now on to a more unfortunate update 
to our area this afternoon. The Lucas County Coroner's Office released initial details on the autopsy of three-year-old Braylon Noble, finding no obvious signs of trauma on the boy's body, and also saying that drowning has not been ruled out yet as a cause of death. More investigation is planned by the coroner's office at this time. There is no time frame for those further results, though, and the conclusion of which depends on if there's anything found in his system. The initial note is not the final ruling from the coroner's office, and more updates are expected. And the community continues to mourn, but is coming together to honor the life of the three-year-old boy with a three-day-long vigil. Braylon's body was found on Wednesday in the swimming pool of the apartments where his family lives. According to the event created on Facebook, the vigil will be at Hunter's Ridge Apartment Complex, where Braylon's body was found starting at 3 p.m. on Thursday until 8 p.m. The vigil will continue on Friday and Saturday from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. on both of those days. Those who wish to participate are asked to bring along red and blue ribbons with teddy bears to go along with the ribbons that are there in honor of Braylon. But that is all I have for you today. For more on your top headlines, make sure you check us out nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. And for more of these updates, make sure you like the video and hit subscribe to the channel. You'll get a little alert to your phone whenever we post a really good video. But with all of that being said, I hope you get out there and you have a very happy Wednesday.